recently in um, Chenza region of um, Amdo in eastern Tibet. The local administration, um, the Chinese administration has been saying, um, has been actually promising uh, cash rewards for any kind of information uh, who may be uh, emulating themselves in the days to come or, or what they call those who instigate such cases of emulations. The Chinese government has been promising cash awards. Uh, they have uh, publicly put up posters. And these are, again, uh, part of the state mechanism. Instead of owning responsibility for people's suffering, they are now trying to s portray that this is being done by somebody else or somebody else is uh, instigating this. By this um, effort of creating a perception that this, all these cases of self emulations are at the instigation from outside is another way why the Chinese government is refusing to accept responsibility and thereby trying to blame somebody else for it. This is a very, very colonial tactic and a colonial perspective. It's a colonial attitude to say that people in Tibet are under our control and if somebody protests or does anything other than what they are saying should have been instigated by somebody else from outside and they are now looking for a blame. I'm saying that this attitude is colonial because you do not give any recognition to people's mind, to people's intelligence. You think that all six million Tibetans are under your control and if somebody has a different opinion, it must have been instigated by somebody else. As if the six million Tibetans have no mind on their own. This is the same attitude with which the Chinese government, uh, Hu Jintao's government, now being run by Xi Jinping's government, has the same attitude towards the Chinese people. That or what is called the Communist Party is only in name. It's a capitalist, brutally capitalist government run in the name of communism and still feeding communism to uh, to to poor people. So this capitalist government run in the name of communism has no respect to the people. All that it is interested is are its interest of natural resources from occupied countries like Tibet, East Turkestan and Southern Mongolia and wants to exploit the 900 million Chinese workforce to make money. The communist uh, government that is only in name, which is a capitalist government, is interested only in making money from natural resources, from the occupied countries, and from the labor of the common people. And therefore, when the Chinese government continues to run this, the problem today is not just about Tibetan people. It's all across China is the same problem. So therefore, uh, the reasons why Tibetans emulate themselves in Tibet as a way to protest and also to assert their way of freedom in Tibet is the same way why there has been more than 100,000 cases of protest in China. The Chinese people are also protesting in China. But because Tibetans have dramatically set themselves on fire, this has perhaps attracted more media attention. And uh, exiled Tibetans, we are speaking to governments all across the world about this. But the 
overseas Chinese are keeping silent about the suffering of the Chinese people in China. Why? Why are what is called the overseas Chinese not speaking for the Chinese people suffering in their own country? I believe that most of the what is called overseas Chinese are sons and daughters of the rich people who are running the businesses in China. And therefore they have direct interest in this. And even as they were in China before going to, um, to the West, they have been hugely ignorant about the Chinese people's suffering. The 900 million workforce they have been taken advantage by the dictatorship. And therefore Chinese people today, even though every Chinese in China would want freedom and democracy, a right to practice any kind of religion, and freedom to, to speech, they cannot imagine a free China because of the overwhelming propaganda and the suppressive military regime there. So people cannot imagine a free China today. And this is how bad the condition is there in China. At least in Tibet. Tibetans are resisting. We have hope. And we have His Holiness the Dalai Lama as, as, as that flame of hope for us. So the Chinese go uh, government's way of trying to tackle with this cases of uh, self-immolation. It is just very colonial and um, uh, this also shows how insecure the Chinese government is in Tibet. That they are losing control and um, they feel that they are now becoming the stranger in Tibet. <laughs>